Good morning, Kimsville Church. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Let's stand to our feet and worship God. I came to praise the Lord. I hope you did too. Hold back my praise. I gotta let it 
raise a hallelujah, God. Oh, we raise a hallelujah. Despite our circumstances, we're going to raise a hallelujah to you, God, and glorify you. Because things change when you come, God. Oh, yes, things change when you come. Can we sing that chorus again? Oh, when I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, louder, louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar oh, and up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Oh, and death is defeated and the king is alive again. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Oh, yes, louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar oh, ashes hope will arise oh death is defeated and the king is alive I'll raise I'll raise a hallelujah oh raise it to him today I'll raise a hallelujah oh we raise a hallelujah this morning I'll raise a hallelujah Oh, yes, we do, God. I'll raise a hallelujah. Oh, we raise a hallelujah, God. We raise it to you this morning, God. Sometimes all we have is a hallelujah, God. We say hallelujah, hallelujah. got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end and you Come on. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. So all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I've nothing else fit for a king. got just one move. Oh, yes. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. Oh, we worship you, God. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I
Meditate right here. Oh, just, yes. just slow it down for a second and let every every voice in this oh, place, yes. every voice in this place, every hand lifted high, yes. every hand lifted high. So I throw, throw up my hands, praise you again and again. All that I have is a heart. Church, just worship him for a moment. I'm on my knees. I'm on my knees. I have nothing else. Except for a heart singing hallelujah. 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 I'm going to ask you to sing us through that in just a moment again. As we were singing it, I was thinking, you know, it's a song about gratitude, and it's a song about what God has done for us. And, you know, it's just amazing when you think that the king of the universe, the one who created it all, he loves me and cares for me. Look at what he's done for us. He saved us. He set us free. He, he's healed us. He's blessed yes, us. He he's has. restored us. He's protected us from things we've never even known were coming our way, but yet he's protected us and stood in that. And there's so many times when, when I look, when I, when I look and I say, Lord, there, there must be something I can do to repay you. There must be something I could do to make it up to you. For all the times that I've missed it, for all the times that I've failed, and I love that all he's looking for is my worship. All he's looking for is my praise. 
All he's looking for me is to raise my voice and say, hallelujah. It's it's an exclamation of praise. That word, hallelujah, it's an exclamation of praise that says, I don't know what else to say, so I'm just going to say, praise your name. Hallelujah. You are faithful. You are good. Hallelujah. Because that's all I can muster today because I don't have anything to offer you to match what you've offered me. And so today, I love the Lord because he doesn't look for us and say, what do you have for me? He just wants our praise. And so I want us to take a moment. Just close your eyes, if you would, and just spend a moment with your heavenly Father today. And just express your praise to him. Express your worship to him. Let him speak into your heart right now. Let him heal you right now. Let him remove the distractions from you right now. Let him bless your life right now. Let him pour into you right now. And let's worship him for a moment. Hallelujah. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. worship you today. We raise our voice to you today, not out of anger, not out of frustration, but with a heart that says thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you that even now you're with us. Your presence is here. You're you're already in the room. You're you're already in our lives. You're already working in our families. And I thank you for that today. Thank you for the prayers that you're going to answer. And so I worship you and I praise you today. I ask you to move and minister among us today. Touch those who need a touch today. Bring peace and healing to those who need peace and healing today. Bring salvation to those who need salvation today. But Lord, I pray touch each and every one of us today. That we would know that we have been marked by your Holy Spirit. That we have been set apart. That you have given us hope. And you have given us purpose. I praise your holy name today. Hallelujah. And I worship your holy name. And we give ourselves into your hands today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated for just a moment. I'm going to ask our ushers to join us. We're going to continue to worship with our tithe and with our offerings. If you're new with us, I want to thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for worshiping with us today. You have chosen a good church family to be a part of, and I'm thankful that you're here with us today. We love you, and we're here for you. If you're new, you got a box that came when you came in. It's it's just a little welcome box. Just has some information about our church and some of the ministries. We'd love for you to get involved. We'd love for you to get connected to us. And so there's there's ways to do that in there. There's a connect card on the top. We'd love for you to fill that out. We'd love to get to know you and just welcome you to the church today. So if you would fill that out, you can drop it in the offering right now as we get ready to receive, or you can. Give it at the end of the offering uh, or at the end of service in the boxes in the foyer. I love you, and we pray for you. You don't know this, but even if this is your first Sunday here, we've been praying for you, praying that God would bless you, praying that God would move in your life, because here's what I know. God's not done with any of us yet. Amen. He is still moving. He is still working, and he is still doing great things for us today. And so I'm thankful for that today. I want us to worship with him with our tithe and with our offering. Say, there's many ways to give. You can give online. You can give in the offering right as we receive. You say, Pastor, why do we do this? Why take time out of our service to do this? Here's why. This is as much of our worship as our singing is. 
our singing is an expression of our worship. Worship is just saying, Lord, I put you first. That's what worship is. We all worship different things. Listen, football season starts this weekend. Do you know that? There's a lot of people going to be worshiping a lot of teams this week, right? It's what you put in charge. It's what you put ahead. So our worship is just putting God first. And so we express that in our praise, but we express that in our offering as well. It says, Lord, I put you first in everything I do. I put you first in my tithing because I trust you with everything else. Because I trust that you are the one in control. And so I want us to continue to worship with him that way. Let's pray over our offering. Lord, I love and thank you. We rejoice that we can give today. I ask you to bless us as we learn these principles of tithing and as we learn these principles of giving. But Lord, we're not just giving to a church. We're investing in the kingdom of God today. And so, Lord, I pray use this offering to do great things. Use this offering to expand your kingdom. Use this offering to bless those around us. And we give you glory and the honor for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's continue to worship with our offering today. Yes, continue to worship with us this morning. You can stand up if you would like. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. Are you desperate for some healing? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. Dreams and wasted years, oh, till the past to disappear, oh. Let me tell you about my Jesus. In all the wrong turns that you would, oh, and go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for your good, oh? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. He rises up from an empty grave. Pray the price for all my guilty. Who could care that much about me? Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way. It rises up from an empty grave. Oh, ain't no sinner that he can't save. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hall
change your life. Oh, yes, he can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that song makes me happy. To know that Jesus can change my life. Amen. It really is our message, right? It really is just a message that tells others, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what he's done for me. Because he's changed my life. And he can change your life. Amen. I'll be honest with you, that's my prayer for each of you. Every time I pray for you, that's my prayer. Is that Jesus would change your life. Would change your circumstances. Would change your heart. Would change your outlook. Would give you what you need. Because he can do it all. Let us pray. Let us worship him. Lord, I thank you. Thank you that you have set us free. Thank you that you are our all in all. Thank you that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And I worship you for that today. Thank you for changing our lives. Thank you for setting us free today. And Lord, I pray, help us to carry that message everywhere we go. In everything we do, in all the ways we act, in all the ways we talk, let us carry the message with us that look at what my Jesus has done. Look at how he's changed my life. And he can do for you what he's done for me. Lord, that's how we want to carry ourselves as Christians and as believers and as followers of you. So be with us today and raise us up to do just that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. If you would, I want to take a moment to just introduce you to somebody this morning. We've got new administrative bishops in our denomination. So Pastor Rick Witter and his wife, Letha, are with us today. Uh, Would you give them a hand? He's going to be bringing the word to us in just a moment, but I just want to take a moment to introduce him to you. You may not know him. He's new to us. He said he's just here six weeks in the state of Virginia this week. So welcome to Virginia. We're glad to have you with us. But it's amazing. I've gotten to see them over the last couple weeks and got to spend some time with them. They did a meet and greet here a couple weeks ago with all of the pastors in our region. And I got to hear his heart. You know, it's always something when somebody comes in, you don't quite know who they are and you, you wonder what their, what their operation is going to be, how they're going to operate, how they're going to do things. And Pastor Tracy and I walked away from that day and said, this couple has a pastor's heart. This couple loves people. It's evident from the first time you hear them talk, they love people. They love ministering to people. They love pouring into people. And so I'm so excited to have him here today with us to share the word of God. Would you give him a welcome as he comes? Praise the Lord. You can be seated this morning. How are you doing today? Everybody good? Yes. Man, the presence of the Lord is real here today, isn't it? Do you sense that? Do you feel that? Are you aware of that the, the presence of the Lord is in this place? What an honor to be with you today. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Uh, Letha and I are thrilled to be here today, thrilled to be in Virginia. Um, we've, as Pastor said, been here six weeks, and this is, this is already our fourth time to the Virginia Beach area. Uh, so we're on the road a lot, and I suggested to Pastor, I said, why don't, why don't we just move here and, and be here? And that man could be my pastor, and I'd be happy about that. that way we, don't you just love the Woodskies, don't you? Why don't you put your hands together and, and thank God for humble, sincere pastors, um, listen, that you can trust, that you know, and they know you, and they want to get to know you better, and they're shepherds. You can tell that. You can, you can feel that. That... that exudes from them as you come in. They're shepherds, and we're the flock, and they're leading us, and I thank God um, for them, and uh, we're praying for you guys. We're excited for you. We're here to serve. We're just here to help. We're here to join in the family. When I walked in the door, one of the wonderful people gave me a box that said, welcome home. So if it's okay, we're just going to be at home with you. Is that all right? So we're not guests anymore. I haven't even met 
many of you, but we're not guests anymore. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're going to do this journey together. Is that okay? All right, all right. Praise the Lord. So good to to be with you today, and and um, I, I'm surprised at how many people I know. I, I looked over, and there was a young lady sitting there, and I thought, man, she looks familiar, and I didn't put it together uh, until someone told me she's, I knew I knew Kaylee when she was a little bitty girl. I know her parents, and I thought, man, I'm getting old, you know, but it's good to see you, honey. We're glad that, glad you're here. Tell your dad I did a good job today, okay, if you will. I, I appreciate I appreciate that, but I'm excited about the word of the Lord t- today. Uh, I'm excited because, and I don't, I don't know if your worship pastor uh, knew what I was preaching about today, but the Holy Spirit certainly did, <laughs> because in the first couple of songs, um, the concept of fear was dealt with, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm, I'm talking today about fearless faith. So I'm not talking so much about fear as I'm talking about the kind of faith that will overcome fear. Anybody need that kind of faith today in your life? Anybody facing something or several things that if you look at it real closely and you look at it with the natural eye, the natural result is fear and intimidation and, and maybe even some, some concern about how the future is going to turn out. Anybody concerned about the future of America right now? Anybody worried about if November doesn't go right? By November, I mean voting day. You know, I had to bring that up today, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Can I just tell you, if you're a believer in Christ, if you're a Christian, if Jesus lives in your heart and you live for him, you don't have to be concerned about who's in the office in Washington, D.C. You don't have to worry about it because they're not in control, all right? Because whoever goes there, or they're, I'm not preaching that today, okay, but they're, they're not in control of this universe. God is a creator of all things, and the Bible simply says that he is with you every step of the way, and you're going to be okay if you hold on to Jesus, okay? That's a real basic message, but there's no need to be afraid, but I want to deal with this today and dig in real deep into a, a, a real famous uh, scripture in the Old Testament, and we're going to see on display the kind of faith, regardless of how big our fears are, and I want you to say this with me, our faith is bigger. Our faith is bigger. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what the bad news is this week, your faith is bigger because Jesus Christ is at the center of your faith, and he is bigger. So I, I'm going to tell you today, we can have the kind of faith that, you know, when it's tested, and you know that your faith will be tested, right? I mean, the New Testament tells us that, that like silver like gold the furnace tests your faith and if you hold on to Christ it'll come out pure it'll come out strong it'll come out valuable you're going to pass those tests we can have the kind of faith that will see you through even the most challenging of times and that's why Paul writes just a little scripture reminding us that we walk by faith not by sight all right So I want you to remember that. Today we're going to read from 1 Kings chapter 18. And if you're not familiar with this uh, chapter, this story, it's it's a favorite of many people because it's the uh, what it's the quintessential good versus evil, you know, bad guy versus good guy. Um, And the underdog wins in this story. And we we all love those kind of stories. But I'm just going to read. Uh, two verses right now, and then I'll give you the backstory in just a little bit. But this is 1 Kings chapter 18, and this is uh, the prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel, okay? And he's saying a little prayer, and it, it doesn't seem like much, but when, when we dig into it, you're going to see uh, little is much when you put it in the hands of the Lord. Here's, here's what this prayer says. O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, or, or Jacob, Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. That's a fairly simple prayer, isn't it? It doesn't sound uh, 
really all that anointed to, to me. I'm, you know, sorry, but it, man, I know some folks that pray when they pray that, you know, the rafters in the place shake. You, you know what I'm talking about? My wife's grandparents were like that. They would pray. Her mother was like that. She would pray, and man, you could, you know, but I'm just, I'm just reading this out of context and say, well, that's not a bad prayer, but I don't see a desperate man here. I don't see somebody begging and pleading for God to, to do something. I just see a guy, a guy making some very basic statements. And if you were not knowing what this was all about, you would think this man's not facing anything. Can I tell you something? This is life or death for this guy. All right. He is being tested like he's never been tested before. And this is an example that tells me something. When you are at your worst, you don't have to be at your worst. You can be at your best because God never has a bad day, all right? And God is never desperate, and God never panics, and God never wants us to be in a panic mode. He wants us to be calm and collected, and here we go, have a fearless faith regardless of what we're facing. Let me give you the background real quickly. This is Elijah. It's God's prophet, and he was in danger, as I said. There was this evil king named Ahab and his wife Jezebel, who was really evil. And, and especially Jezebel wanted Elijah the prophet killed. She wanted to kill him. She'd already killed a whole lot of prophets. She was a bad lady. And she wanted to do to Elijah what she'd done to all those other prophets and, and wanted him annihilated. And, and you think, man, what is the problem? Why, why, did, why did they hate him so much? And I want you to get this. This is, why they, this is why they wanted him dead. Because he was a messenger from God who was telling the people, get this now, he was telling the people, look, what you're doing is wrong. Did, did you hear what I said? A prophet from God telling the people, you're sinning. What you're doing is not good. God is against you because of what you're doing. Well, what were they doing? They were worshiping false gods. They were worshiping the prophets. Or the prophets of Baal were worshiping these false gods, and, and the whole country was following them. And here is Elijah standing up. Get this now. He's in the minority. This isn't a popular opinion. Kind of sounds like gospel preachers in the United States of America in 2024. Come on, right? A lot of what we're doing is sinful, folks. We shouldn't be doing these things. These things that we're doing, our, our attitudes, our beliefs, our behaviors are against the Scripture. And there's going to be judgment that comes. Can I tell you, that kind of preaching is not real popular these days, all right? It's not. How many of you are thankful for a man of God who will stand in the pulpit and preach the gospel regardless of who likes it? And you know why he does that? Because one day, like Elijah, like all of us, you'll stand before God and, and give an account. And God will either say, you did a good job preaching the truth, or man, you, you shrunk back when you were needed the most. Well, here, here is Elijah preaching the truth and saying, the, the land is full of sin, and God's bringing judgment. And judgment was already coming. In fact, he had announced a drought. He said, it's not going to rain. God is going to get your attention one way or another. Listen, God is not shy, and God doesn't need your permission to do things in the world. And a lot of times when we see things happening around us, we think, man, it's all out of control. No, it's not out of control. God is in control, and God is doing everything he needs to do to get the attention of people who are away from him. This is a serious message because I'm describing today. I, I, I really am, all right? I, I find it interesting in one of these encounters when Elijah comes into the presence of Ahab. Ahab says, there you are, you troublemaker. That's what he called him. Isn't it interesting that people who speak the truth many times are called the troublemakers? But Elijah turned it right back around and he said, no, I'm not the troublemaker, Ahab. You're the troublemaker because you are the one that is lead, you're leading the people into sin. Call it like it is. Call it like it is. I like, I like Elijah a lot. He's one of my favorite, favorite characters. Ahab was looking for Elijah so he could be killed. And for a while, and I want you to get this, for a while, Elijah was in hiding. He was in hiding. If you've studied his story, you know 
he struggled with fear. He struggled perhaps with anxiety, but for a while, Elijah was in hiding. And before you start pointing fingers and say, man, what a coward, you know, what a coward. Sometimes, let me say this, sometimes the work of the Lord is best accomplished when people don't rise up out of their own personality and out of their own pride and out of their own ego. See, Elijah was like the rest of us men. A lot of times when you're tested, you want to rise up and say, hey, you know, who do you think you are? Sometimes God doesn't want you to say a word. Sometimes he wants you to wait. Wait for the right timing. Wait for the right timing. Wait for the right timing. You know, Elijah wasn't as much hiding as he was waiting for the right timing. But guess what? The timing is right. The timing is right. He hears from the Lord. So listen now, Elijah, and this is still the background, okay? <laughs> Elijah, does this count against my time preaching with giving the background? Okay, good, good. I'm glad. Just, just check it. Just check it. Elijah was directed by God, and that's a, that's a very important statement there, to offer a challenge to these false prophets of Baal. God told him, today is the day, now is the time. People have to make a decision. I want you to challenge the false prophets of Baal to a contest. A contest. That's an unusual circumstance for the scripture. You don't see this thing happening a lot. But to prove once and for all who was truly God, here's what the challenge was. We'll build an altar. We won't light a match. Okay, nobody's got a big lighter in their hand. We'll pray, and the one true God will answer with fire. Wow. I want to tell you something. If you challenge the enemy with that, you better have heard from God, all right? You better have heard from God because you're going to look foolish if you're doing this on your own accord. Well, he heard from God, and he challenged these prophets, but here's a real big problem, and this is why I want to talk so much about fear today. He was outnumbered, severely outnumbered. Anybody feel outnumbered from time to time? Does it feel like there are more bad people than good people? Does it feel like the bad guys are winning sometimes? I mean, if you read the same news I'm reading, it feels like we're losing sometimes. But we're going to win. We're going to win. Hold on to your faith. We're going to win. We're going to win. He challenges them. There's a scriptural precedence for this. This uh, fire coming from heaven and consuming the sacrifice that was upon the altar. Back in Leviticus 9, God burned up the sacrifice. Nobody did that. God did that. He rained fire down from heaven and burned up the sacrifice, and the people were amazed. So God had done it before. The prophet knew the word of the Lord, so he said all God's going to do is just be God. He's going to do what God does, you know, and, and he will come through. And one point of this interaction, this challenge, Elijah says to the people, and this is so important, he says, I want you to stop wavering between two opinions. You know, if God is God, then serve him. But if Baal is God, then, then serve him. But decide. Now, why is that so important? Well, first of all, back in Joshua's time, back a little bit earlier than in, the, in the Old Testament, Joshua said, choose today who you're going to serve. You know what the people said? We choose to serve God. That's what they said. This time it's a little bit different because the Bible is very careful. If, you, if you're looking for something to study, go, go ahead and dig into this when you get home today or this, this, this week sometime. The Bible says this when Elijah said, listen, you've got to decide who you're going to serve. You're going to decide who your God is. You have to decide. You know what it says? The people said nothing. There was no response. Once again, church, kind of like today, people are given a choice. Decide who you're going to serve. You're going you to be a Christian or are you not? And there's so many people who's like, I'm not deciding, <laughs> you know. I think some of these people were probably saying, I'm going to wait to see who wins this contest. <laughs> and then I'll decide what God I'm going to serve. I wonder how many people today who are unbelievers that you tell about Jesus and they say, now I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and see how this thing turns out, you know. 
Well, I can go ahead and tell them we know how it's going to turn out. I've read the end of the book. Guess who wins? Jesus wins. All right. I can go ahead and tell you the choice today is choose the Lord, choose life, choose Jesus. You'll never regret that. You'll never go back on that decision. Elijah struggled with fear. Doesn't sound like it. Sounds like he's incredibly brave. Because there were 450 prophets of Baal versus one believer in God. 450. And he invited them. He said to Ahab, go get all your prophets and bring them. Man, this is a, this is a showdown, you know. On the outside, Elijah sounded brave. He sounded like he was full of courage. He sounded like he had the world by the tail. Everything was going to be okay. Have any of you ever experienced that to where on the outside, you know, you're calm, collected, but on the inside, you're shaking in your boots, you know, because you're not sure. You, you think you know. You believe God is on your side, but what if I got it wrong? What if I missed it this time? Some fear is real, but some fear is imagined. Yeah, some fear is important and necessary, but some fear is illogical. Okay, I'll just give you a real quick example. I have a, a phobia. It's a, not a big deal, but I'm, I'm afraid of heights. In fact, I'm a little shaky up here today, just just. And it's completely psychological. It's totally in my mind. You know why I know that? Because I can fly in an airplane all the time and not think twice about it. But man, put me on a ladder to change these light bulbs, and I'm, Lord Jesus, help me. You know, that's not logical. You know, how many of you are afraid of snakes? Go ahead and raise your hand. All right. Well, we got some witnesses in the house today. Yeah, and that makes sense if there's a rattlesnake you know, crawling up behind you. But you folks who are afraid of snakes, how many of you kind of get the heebie-jeebies when you see a video or a picture of a snake? Can I tell you what? That's illogical because that's, that picture is not going to hurt you. But the fear feels real, doesn't it? Can I just tell you very quickly that many of the things that we face in this life, in God's reality, there is nothing to be afraid of, but it certainly feels like fear to us. So for Elijah, because God was on his side, there was nothing for him to fear. But boy, it felt like fear was the right emotion at that time. But this is what I'm so proud of him for and what I really want to encourage you to do. Regardless of your fear, hold on to your faith. Regardless of how bad things look in your life, never let go of your faith. Your faith is being tested Elijah's faith was being tested, and God had for him a faith that was fearless. You know, a lot, several years ago, Nike made a billion dollars on these shirts that said, no fear. You know, <laughs> no fear. I, I, I like that, that slogan, except it's not really accurate. There is fear, okay? There's a lot of fear. But you know what's more powerful than that fear? Our faith. Yeah, there's fear, but my faith is greater, all right? I've got a faith that's fearless. It's faith over fear. I don't have to worry about the fear, although it feels real. My faith is real because God is real, and my faith is in him. Amen. Come on and give glory to the Lord here today. Let me tell you real quickly before we unpack that prayer, the worst kind of fear is, is, is spiritual fear. It's the kind of fear that makes you question your faith. Okay, fear of snakes, fear of heights, whatever. But the fear that says, maybe God's promises aren't true. Fear that causes you to think that maybe those stories that my grandmother told me about Jesus answering prayer, maybe those were made up. Maybe when the pastor preaches the Bible, I mean, how do we know that Bible's true? Maybe when we, we pray, Maybe there's not even a God in heaven. Why am I saying these things? Because many of you are very familiar with those lines. They come at you all the time. Every time there's a, there's a challenge, every time there's a struggle, that voice in the back of your head says, eh, maybe what you've built your life on is false. 
See, that's the worst kind of fear. That's the worst kind of fear. You can personalize this concept, if you will. When, when fear controls your emotions, when fear causes you to doubt that God is who he said he is, fear that makes you question your faith, you know, um, the job that you love is, is eliminated. And suddenly your faith is on trial, isn't it? I'm afraid of poverty. I'm afraid of not being able to pay the bills. I'm afraid of losing the house. How about this? Maybe a, a valued friend, a trusted friend betrays you. Has that ever happened? And, and suddenly everything you thought was real is not real. And, and that the pain and the bitterness of, of uh, deception and backstabbing, it, it, it controls your emotions. Or if the diagnosis from the doctor is bad and, and the fear of an unknown future. See, this is very real for, for many of you today. Some of you are living through those very things right now as I preach. But for all of us, if none of those things are true in your life, for every one of us here, and this is where I really want to dig in, we are all in a season of spiritual testing regarding our faith. Regarding the things that we believe to be true. Regarding our prayer and our trust in the Lord. See, you're, you're tested when your values are being questioned. You're tested when your convictions come under fire. Your convictions meaning this is what I believe is right and wrong. And someone or something says, no, I think you're wrong. I think your beliefs are wrong. When your character is disrespected, when, when the very Bible that we preach out of is doubted, when the gospel is laughed at, you're saying, Bishop, what do you mean? I'm saying in our world today, all these things that I'm talking about right now, they are true. And we're dealing with them. The truth is rejected when your spiritual beliefs, get this, identify you as a bad person. Okay, have you, have you heard that yet? If you haven't, if you believe what the Bible says, somebody's going to say you are a hater. <laughs> you hate people. You, you're judgmental. You think you're better than everybody else. Mm. That's the world we're living in right now. We're in a battle for our faith where it's good versus evil, right versus wrong, right? You know, this doesn't take the Lord by surprise because he says to us in the book of Isaiah, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, right? Who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The Living Bible says this, they say that what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. And that black is white and white is black and bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. You know, it's an upside down world that we're living in right now. And here's, here's what has shifted in the last few years. It used to be that even people who didn't believe and follow Jesus, they still had a respect for Jesus and his word. But we're living in a day to where that respect is gone. No longer is there a fear of God except in the church. So I do want to tell you this. It's not bad news, but the news is, we're in the minority. We're in the minority. And this is a test. And God has a faith for you that will help you to be able to carry on and be victorious. So that's exactly what's going on in Elijah's life. Can we, can we look in to this prayer? I want to read it one more time. It's 1 Kings 18, verses 36, 37. Just 36B, a few, a few words in. Let me read the prayer again. Oh, Lord. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. That prayer takes on a little more significance now, doesn't it? You know, I admire Elijah all the more now because if that's me praying, I might be saying some other stuff. Lord, just kill these guys, you know. <laughs> Wipe them out, Lord, you know. No. He was calm. He was collected. 
And I want to show you five quick things from this prayer. When we talk about our fearless faith, our fearless faith, first of all, we see this in the prayer that Elijah prayed. It's a foundational faith. Did you see that when he prayed this? God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel, Jacob, same, same person. What, what is he praying there? He is establishing the fact that God is at the foundation of everything. When he refers to his spiritual fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is saying this. He has always been our God. He is our God now, and he will always be our God. We have to begin with this foundation that God is who he said he is, is and that God is, and here's a word for you, covenantal God. God made a covenant with the spiritual fathers and said, I will be your God, you will be my people. He made that promise not just to Abraham, not just to Isaac, not just to Jacob, but God made that promise to every believer, everybody who is saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, I am am your God, and you are my people, and that will never change. So think about that today. When we're facing our fears, let's let, have this foundational faith that God hasn't changed his mind. When he said, I'll be with you, he meant it. So I, I'm, I'm under fire today. My faith is being challenged. My faith is being questioned just this week, I, I found out just yesterday, our precious granddaughter, who's 13 years old, she loves the Lord, she's full of his spirit, she's just a, a beautiful child. I'll show you pictures later if you want to see all the pictures of our grandchildren. There are thousands of them. But one of her little friends challenged her and said, you know, in essence, I don't approve of the way you're living your life. You know, as, a, as an eighth grader. Can I tell you something? That is the world that our children are growing up in today. It's no longer, oh, you go to church, that's cool. It's, you go to church, what are you, crazy? You hear what I'm saying, folks? And what I want Sophia, our granddaughter, to know that her God is not just her God, but he is the God of her parents, and he is the God of her grandparents, and her great-grandparents, and all those who came before her who have prayed for her, and because this foundational faith is firm, she will not be shaken. Amen? We won't be shaken, folks, because our faith is foundational to who we are. It's at the base, it's at the bottom. Everything we built, we built our life on this. And it's an eternal word that's not going to change. A fearless faith is a foundational faith. Would you just say foundational? Foundational. You remember that. Another thing that I see in this beautiful, simple little prayer is this. A fearless faith is a factual prayer. A factual prayer. And all he says is, you are God. That's a fact. Nobody can argue with that. Oh, they'll try. Nobody can refute that. Oh, they'll give their best effort at it. But the fact is, is that God is God and there is no other God. Right? All these other false gods, all these other religions that have been developed, all these other belief systems that have been structured. Listen, they're all false. Why? Because there's only one true God. There can only be one true God. And that's why God says in the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. All right? So state the facts. People can argue. But in that prayer, I don't think Elijah had to remind God. I think Elijah was reminding Elijah. <laughs> You're God. You've proven that. You're the creator of everything. You're the sustainer of the whole universe. You hold everything together. You've, you've been in charge since before the beginning. You'll always be in charge. I think you're in charge today. You're God. What a confidence builder that is. Do, doesn't it make you think, as we were singing today about uh, about fear no longer having a hold on us, you know, how that fear has to bow, uh, that, that when our faith is strong, fear is not nearly, so, you know, it starts with this idea that, listen, you can't get any higher than the God that you serve. He's it, the ultimate authority. And that increases my confidence today, and it makes my, my fear kind of shrink, you know. So fearless faith is, first of all, foundational faith. A fearless faith is a factual, would you say that with me? factual faith. You are God. Let's keep going into this prayer. And I, I 
worded it this way kind of, kind of on, on purpose. A fearless faith is a fearful faith. <laughs> it sounds like I'm arguing with myself now, right? How can it be fearless and fearful at the same time? Well, here's what I want to tell you. The fearful faith that I'm talking about is the fear and respect and reverence for God, for being a holy God, a righteous God, a perfect God. We're not supposed to fear anything except fear of the Lord, all right? And it's missing in our world today, but I want to tell you today, children of God, listen, fear of God isn't fear. I'm hiding. I'm afraid he's coming after me. I think he's going to get me. No, it's, it's reverence before him. It's the awareness that when we gather around the throne, we're, we're, we're going to be falling on our faces saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And, and that kind of fear and that kind of reverence puts you in a very strong position with God. It's a fearful faith. Respect of God. Honor of Him. To Him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be glory and honor and praises forever and ever. There is no God like our God. Hallelujah. Can you feel your faith building up here a little bit? Put yourself in this story. Start praying this prayer. God, I'm facing stuff. But I've got a foundational faith. You've always been God. You've seen us through this far. You've, you've, you've brought us this far by faith. You won't leave us. You won't forsake us. It's foundational. God, I'm facing a, an enemy, but my enemy will fall because you are God. There is no other God like you. They can't stand in front of you. God, my problems are about to overwhelm me. I'm not sure, but I respect you. I honor you. I live to please you, and you're in charge of my life. All right. So I'm going to be okay. I'll have a fearless faith. Hallelujah. Foundational faith, factual faith, Fearful faith. Fourthly, a fearful, a fearless faith is a forceful faith. Would you say forceful? Forceful. I like this uh, statement that Elijah makes. I've done all these things at your word. And you can almost see him saying, this is not my idea. <laughs> I didn't come up with this, Lord. This is your idea. And can I tell you something? If it's God's idea, it's going to win. If, if, it's, if it's God's idea, you can have confidence it's going to turn out that way. Ultimately, God's will will be done. Ultimately, God will have his way. Ultimately, everything he says is going to come to pass. Now, it seems like there are times when it's delayed, right? But a delay is not a no. You just hang in there and God's word will come. Listen, the Bible, everything the Lord says in his word is true and it will be accomplished in the name of the Lord. So the forcefulness comes this way. You can have all the faith in the world that if the Lord says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a miracle. If the Lord says, I'm going to, I'm going to create a miracle of multi multiplication, and I'm going to feed a multitude of people with just a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish, we can look at it and say, that doesn't make any sense. And if I'm walking by sight, I'm, I'm very afraid to say that. But if the Lord says it's going to happen and we're walking by faith, we say, pull up to the table, folks. There's going to be a, a banquet feast here. Everybody's going to eat, and there's going to be enough left over. And if the Lord says, Moses, you and all the people, you know, the, you're, you're at the, 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 the Dead Sea and there's no way getting across. Don't worry about it. I'm going, to, I'm going to part the water. And if you're Moses and you're walking by fear, you're saying that's impossible. Egypt is coming. We're going to be destroyed right here. But if you're walking by faith, you can say, fellas, you don't even have to put your mud boots on, okay? It's, a, it's going to be dry land. Let's get ready to cross. 
You see what I'm talking about? When the Lord calls you, speaks to you, tells you something in your life or in your ministry or something with your family or something with your future or something that you aren't out, you, you don't know what's going to happen, but the God, God of, of the ages has given you a promise. Get ready. It's going to happen. Your faith can be fearless and you can prepare. You can prepare. It's going to take place. The pastor hasn't told me anything, but these, these folks are, are people of dreams and visions. God speaks to their hearts. And they, they have some things that God has given them for this church that if they would speak it out right now, some of you would say, oh, they've lost their minds, you know. But listen, if God said it, get ready. It's coming. It's coming, all right. If God tells you that that wayward lost loved one, I really feel this now. Some prodigals that aren't living right, some children, some grandchildren that are away from the Lord. If God has made a promise to you about that, hold on to that promise. You have faith, all right? Don't be afraid. God is going to come through. Don't quit praying. Don't quit living. Don't give up. It's going to come through. If God said it, it's got force. It's got power. It has authority. That's the kind of faith we need. What fear? What fear? Forceful faith. So we've got foundational faith, factual faith, fearful faith, forceful faith. And this might be my favorite. A fearless faith is a freeing faith. Talk about liberty here now, okay? Talking about chains breaking. Talking about prison doors opening up. Talking about God setting the captives free. Oh, if we ever needed that, we need it today. There are so many people that are bound. They're in bondage. They're locked up. It might be to addiction. It might be to habits. It might be for a negative way of thinking. It might be generational bondages. We don't know. But he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We have a freeing faith. Now, I have to back up real quickly and tell you, and I just, I openly admitted it, if that's their if, if that's me there and I'm praying, I'm probably saying, God, I want you to wipe these people out. <laughs> you know, destroy them, God. You know, maybe you've never prayed that kind of thing, you know. But some of you have. <laughs> yeah. well, that's not the prayer he prayed. The very heart of God comes out in his prayer. Although he was afraid that he could be killed. He prayed this. God let them know that you have turned their hearts back. You know what this is? This is a redemptive prayer. This is a, a, a God's heart being a loving and forgiving and compassionate God. It is true that God is judge. It is true that one day everybody will pay for their sins that have not been forgiven. But the heart of God is this. God loves people. And even when he sees them wayward from his whole goal, why does God let bad things happen? Because he's trying to get the hearts back. He says, I want you to come to me. I want you to know that I'm your only hope. And that's a message that needs to be preached. A freeing faith. I love what R.D. Patterson said about this verse. He said, Elijah asked God to answer him so that all would know that the Lord was ever anxious for their repentance and return to him. I love that. When God sees people sinning, when people curse God, when they live lives that are absolutely total total rebellion, every once in a while in our weakness and our fear, we might pray against them. God, I want you to kill them. I want you to shut them. No, that's not the heart of God. The heart of God is draw them to salvation. The heart of God is I want them to come home to me. The heart of God is they belong to him. He's just trying to get them back. And do you know that's the job of the church? Paul tells us that we have a ministry of reconciliation. We've been reconciled to God, and we're supposed to bring other people back. So listen, if you're trying to reach your neighbor, you're not going to reach them by yelling at them and, and, and saying bad things. No, don't you, no, love them. Let the love of God Minister, even, even if it's a dangerous situation, God loves them. Man, I love this passage. I guess you can tell. I, just, I don't have any more uh, points today. You'll be glad. That, that's all of them, okay? <laughs> but, but what I have to do is show you the end result. 
what we have to do is look at the Word of God and, and see how God answered this prayer. Um, I didn't give you a lot of details on how all this praying took place. I didn't tell you about the false prophets of Baal who, who all day long were praying to their false god. What a waste of time. If there's anybody that should be afraid, it should be people who are praying to false gods because they're, they're not going to be an answer. Not going to be an answer. Man, they, they, they went overboard all day long, no answer. Elijah calmly, remember now, this is a guy who was hiding. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. After this event is over, he keeps struggling with fear. Okay, you can read into the next few chapters, and he's running for his life. Isn't it interesting how we, we just, sometimes we don't get it. So don't beat yourself up if you struggle, okay? Even the prophets struggled. But Elijah says, let's, let's make this even harder. You guys done? You finished? You done everything you need to do? Okay, my turn. He said, bring in some water. Let's dig ditches around this, uh, around this altar and uh, bring in water. A lot of water. No, more. <laughs> yeah, bring the garden hoses. Bring, yeah, let the pool, empty the pool into here. Let's, let, can I remind you that this is in a season of drought? This is a season of drought. Water is the most valuable resource. What is he doing? He's lost his mind. No, no, he just has a fearless faith. <laughs> you know. he, he knows that if the entire ocean was poured into, onto this altar, God still has the power to burn it up with fire from heaven. So I have to show you, and, and you'll want to rejoice with this. This is after the, his prayer, 1 Kings 18. Let's look at this, verse 38. Hallelujah. It says, then the fire of the Lord fell. Of course it did. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now look at this last verse I'll read. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, would you read this with me? The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Do you see that? I mean, celebrate that, folks. It's fantastic. The musicians could come. What I see here is one man who had a problem with fear. But he stood on the promises of God's word. What I see is a, a one prophet outnumbered. Some of you, you feel outnumbered right now. Because of the health issues. Because of the financial issues because of the relationship issues. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You see what I'm doing? I'm counting problems. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know if your marriage is going to survive. I'm just being real, okay? You, you don't know if that child is going to get through this crisis. You don't know. How that problem you're walking through is going to turn out, you can, you can name them. You can name them. You can name them. There's nothing wrong with naming them. The Bible names 450 prophets of Baal. Nothing wrong with naming them. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if they're 450 or 4 million. <laughs> because there's one is more powerful than the 450. There is one who is able to overcome all evil, all challenges to your faith. There is one who has all the authority necessary to see you through the greatest attack on your faith that you've ever been through. His name is Jesus. Put your faith in him. Put your confidence in him. There's, there's a battle today. 
There's a battle. Your, your faith is under fire. You may not know it. If you have children in, in public schools, ask them. Okay. It's under fire. If, you're, if your faith is not being attacked, mm, help me, Lord, to say this the right way. It might be because you're on the run and you're hiding your faith. But if you speak your faith out, there are going to be some folks that will push back. There are going to be some people that say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm. Can I tell you something? God has given you this faith so that you can be an overcomer. He doesn't want you defeated. He doesn't want you living in fear. He wants you to live a confident life. And you can face up to these things knowing that you know that you know that God is who he said he is. That God will do what he promised he would do. And God will see you through. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, church, and we're going to enter into a time of prayer here. And the worship team will be leading us um, in just a few moments. And if you close your eyes just for a moment, I have to ask a question. And my question really, it asks for a response. Because I understand that there might be some people here today who you've not been living your faith. You don't, you don't have a faith in Christ. Maybe you, you say it, but you don't have a relationship with him. And so you're, you're facing life and all the problems on your own strength. And you're strong. I'll give that to you. You're strong. But I want to tell you something. You're not strong enough on your own. No. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus in our lives. I want to give opportunity first. If there's anyone here today who will say, Bishop, I, I don't have, I'm, I'm not living for the Lord. I don't, I'm not in a right relationship with him. Maybe you were at one time, but, but you're not now. Okay. We have an old-fashioned term for that. It's not derogatory. It's called backslid, okay? That's a very real situation for some people. Well, you don't have to leave here today in a backslidden condition with God. Maybe, you, maybe you've never prayed a prayer to the Lord at all. And today is an opportunity for you to do that. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. And this is why I ask people to close their eyes. I'm going to ask you to come up first. In a few minutes, several people will be joining us. But if you're here today and you'd say, I, I, I need to give my life to Jesus. I know I can't do this without him. I'm kind of overwhelmed. I, I, want to, I want to ask Jesus to live in my life. I want him to lead me. I want him to direct me. Would you just step out of your, your chair, out of that row right now, and just come up to the front and as soon as you get up here, some other folks are going to join you, and they're going to be praying for you. But would you just come up? You don't have to be afraid. You don't, you don't have to be nervous about it. You're, you're with family. You're at home here today, so just come on up. God bless some people are coming up. That's good, okay? If you need, if you need, yeah, don't be looking around, okay? It's between them and the Lord. If you need Jesus in your life, today's the day. Listen, I want to go back to what Elijah said. Choose today. Decide today. You're... No response is not a good response. you got to choose. Is there anyone else? Anybody else that wants to come? And pastors are praying with them, and this is a beautiful thing. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hey, this is great. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need some other prayer folks up here. Okay. If you're a prayer leader, you're a leader in the church, come and join them. Thank you. Is there anybody else today? Lord, I want to surrender to you. All you're doing is saying, God, you're bigger than I am. You know, you want to do that? All right. Let's first pray with these folks, and then I'm going to open up the altars for anybody who's dealing with fear and so forth. But just stretch your hand this way. God, I thank you for these people that have come out of response to your love. You're drawing them to you. And I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. You love them so much. And I pray that today, God, as they pray this prayer of faith, Lord, and surrender themselves to you, you'll be faithful. You'll answer them. You'll respond. You will in no wise cast them out. You will receive them. You will forgive their sins. And they'll have a brand new life from this point on. I thank you, God, for that. 
I thank you, God, for that. Bless them today while they pray. Thank you, Lord. All right, church, how many of you are dealing with fear? You're dealing with challenges. You're dealing with things that you need God's help with. Would you now move up here, and we're all going to be praying together. If you're facing something that is, makes you feel uncertain, come up here. If the future sometimes is, is a little dark and dreary and unpredictable, I want you to come up here. If your faith is being challenged at school, young people, listen, you need the prayer support of this church, okay? So I want you to come up. Let's go ahead and move. There we go. Start moving up. And we're just going to pray. We're going to trust the Lord. We're going to stand upon his promises. And we're going to see God do some amazing things in this place. Pray one for another. Move around. If you have a loved one up here, I want you to come up and support them with prayer. And we will do this together. And then we'll bring the service to a conclusion. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, God, for these precious people who are responding. And God, I see in them the prophet Elijah. God, they're, they're being challenged. They're being, Lord, they're, they're, there's much resistance for some of them. Some of them feel outnumbered. Some of them feel, God, as though, Lord, they're all alone. But remind us, remind us, remind us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us, oh God. So we stand with one another. And we're reminded, God, that you are with us. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God, I pray that you will remind us that if we hold on to you, if we stay faithful and steadfast to the very end, oh God, you will see us through. You are our God. You're our foundation. You're our rock. There's no place else we can turn. God, we don't need to turn to anyone else. We built our lives upon you, the promises of your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for faith that is arising. And what we don't know, God, is what tomorrow will hold. But we know that you hold tomorrow and you hold us. And we're going to be okay. God, no matter what the future holds for our, our world, for our nation, you're God. Nothing's going to change that. God, this is what we pray, that in these challenging times, Lord, that our faith will arise and that the truth of a redeeming God, a loving God, a compassionate God will be, Lord, what is on display, even as it was that day on Mount Carmel. I thank you, God, that we're not alone. I thank you, God, that you're with us. Just worship him.
Because I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. Oh, yes, he has. So this is my story. Oh, and this is my song. Oh, yes. Praising my risen King and Savior.
trust in God, oh my Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail, and I trust in God, oh we trust in you Jesus. The Word of God says that we can be strong and courageous. And Joshua chapter 1 says we can be strong and courageous because He will never leave us nor forsake us. That's the foundational faith that we get to stand on as Christians today. Bishop, thank you for sending that word to us today. Thank you for sharing with us today. Letha, thank you for being with us today. And here's what I know. God is good to us. God is present with us. We can rely on him and we can walk with him. He is a good God. And we can put our faith in him. Because every time we call on his name, he answers us. Not sometimes. Not every once in a while. Not just in those amazing services where I felt the goosebumps every single time I call on the name of the Lord he hears me every time I utter his name he listens to me not because of who I am but because of who he is that's the faith we have today I love you I pray for you Lord I pray a blessing over every person that's here that you'd anoint them and bless them today that you would walk with them and strengthen them, that you would renew their faith today, that maybe they're facing a fear today that they're, they're unsure of. They're unsure of the future. They're unsure of this week. But, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would give them strength today. I pray that your Holy Spirit would remind them of who they are today and that your Holy Spirit would give them the courage and the strength to keep standing regardless of what looks around them regardless of what the odds look like, regardless of what the situation looks like, to stand knowing that they serve a God who answers, and they serve a God who is present, and they serve a God who is there. And, Lord, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in the fact that we are your children, and we bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Listen, here's what I'll tell you. If you need help, we're here. We're never too busy for you. We never have something else we need to be doing other than you. We love you. We pray for you. We hurt for you. So if you need anything, don't walk through it alone. If you're in a season where you're saying, I'm struggling, I just come see us. Come, we'll pray with you. We'll walk with you. Text us. We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. We love you. Here's what I know. God loves you more. And he'll be with you. God bless you. You may be seated. Let me share a few things with you. Again, thank you again, Bishop, for being with us. This was such a powerful day and a powerful worship. We're going to have to have you back out again. We'll do this again, yeah. Give him another hand. Listen, our small groups start this week. Amen, right? Yeah, our group starts Tuesday night. There's two groups starting Tuesday night. There's two groups starting on Wednesday. There's two groups, or there's a group starting on, on Thursday. We've got plenty of times and plenty of places for you to get involved. We would love for you to be. Actually, we have three groups on Wednesday. I'm sorry. We have a Wednesday morning group that I forgot all about. My wife's leading it. I forgot all about it. See? We've got plenty of places for you to get involved. Here's what I know. We're better when we're together. And so find a small group to get into. You want to know how to get strength? Find a small group. Find a small group of believers because there's times when we don't have the faith that when we sit in our small groups and we do Bible studies together and we worship together, that we realize that, you know what, I can be strong because others around me are walking with me and praying with me. So join a small group. There's sign-ups in the back on this side over here. Uh, find a group and join to be a part of it.
Uh, we have a joint service coming up on September 22nd. If you don't know what that is, we have a Hispanic congregation, Maranatha, that meets in our in our church after us. And so we're going to get together and worship God together that day. We're going to rejoice together of what God is doing. Their church is growing. Our church is growing. And we're going to get together and celebrate that we serve the same God, that we serve a God who is, who is with us. And so be here for it. We're going to have worship that day. We're going to have a meal that day. Uh, we want you to bring something for that meal. And so you can sign up for that in the back there. And so we'd love for you to be a part of that. Uh, here's the next thing. Friendsgiving is coming up, November 3rd. If you were here last year, you, you were a part of this. You got to be a part of this. We've got our Friendsgiving service. It's a big day of celebration. We're going to have a meal together. We're going to have fun together. We're going to have games out in the yard. We're going to get together and just rejoice and, and just have a great time. But here's what I know. God is going to do something in people's lives. God is going to do something in people's lives. And here's what you need to do for today. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. But you don't need to do any of it. You don't need to worry about the meal. You don't need to worry about anything that day. But here's what you need to do. You need to invite your family and your friends to come be a part of it. Last year, we had six people saved at our Friendsgiving service. God is on the move, and God is here. We're going to be talking about he knows my name, and what does that mean? And so make sure you're here for that. We're going to, we're going to be talking about that in the coming weeks and giving you invite cards to invite people. And so, so be there for that uh, and, and plan for that. Uh, December 22nd, can you believe we're already talking about Christmas? But December 22nd, we're going to do a Christmas play right here at the church. That morning, we're going to have a Christmas play. We're going to do our Christmas dinner that day as well. Listen, we're just eating a lot together over these next few months. So, man, you better get ready. We're going to pack on the winter pounds, get ready for, for winter coming. We're going to have a great old time, but we want you to be a part of it. And so, so we're going to talk about this next week. We're going to have some sign-ups, ways that you can get involved in the play, get involved in the production that day. But again, start praying now, December 22nd. It's the Sunday before Christmas. It's a great time to invite family and friends to church because here's what I know. People come to church when they're invited. It just happens. They come to church when they're invited, so invite them to come be with us that day. If you didn't get a chance to turn in your Connect card, we'd love for you to do that. We'd love to, to just welcome you. You can, again, do that uh, in the foyer. There's black boxes on the wall. You can drop them in there. You can give them to me as well after service. Uh, if you did not get a box and you're new with us, uh, we've got Mike in the back here. He's at the back table. Uh, he will be more than happy to give you a box and welcome you and greet you with a smile. So uh, he'll be uh, glad to do that for you. And then one last thing as we get ready to close. Pizza with the Pastors is coming up in October, first Sunday of the month, October 6th. If you have not been to Pizza with the Pastors, this is for you. We want to get to know you. I promise you I won't sign you up for anything. It's probably the only time I'll promise you that, so this is your chance. This is a, this is a risk-free chance to come just hang out and get to know everybody, get to know the pastors, and hear a little bit about the church. We would love for you to come be a part of that reception with us, all right? So mark your calendars for that. If you're new to us, with us or have not been to it, uh, there's a sign-up in the back. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so check out the tables. We've got tables in the back that have other information and other activities that are going on. But let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. And I rejoice in you. And we leave here today with a renewed faith. We leave here today knowing that our, our faith is forceful today. That your promises are real. And so, Lord, I pray, strengthen each and every person. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Have a blessed week.